Six two. Six two. Six two. What about? Could I? Yeah. Could I go into the negative six, yeah. common negative six? Six six. Okay. So, what would the equation for that vertical line be? Hey guys, what does every point on that line have in common? The x is 6. So what is an equation I could write to say x is 6? x is 6. Oh, okay. That's it. I don't think that. Wow, that's a lot easier than I thought. Yep. Then again, that's almost every question in the class. Every x value is 6. Notice that's my justification. Oh, there a lot of teachers teach to memorize these equations, and I used to struggle to remember the equations for horizontal and vertical lines, legitimately. And then when I realized, like, oh, that vertical line, every x value is 6, oh, then x is just equal to 6. That's all that that means. Remember, I want something that makes that equation true. Or an equation to represent all those points, x is equal to 6. Jaden, what's going on? Thank you. Alright. If you have not finished taking these notes, you need to take these notes, right? So when I look at 7b, what do I know immediately about that line? Graph the parallel line. So what does that tell me? Okay, what does that tell me though if the line is parallel? What do you know about lines parallel to this line that is given? It has the same slope. Anything else? Anything else? Guys, y'all? Yes, parallel lines have the same slope, 100,000%. But look at this. What kind of line is this? It's horizontal. So what do you know about the parallel line? It's going to be horizontal. Oh, there we go, right? Because here's the thing. Yes, parallel lines are... Um, they have the same slope, but also we talked about this earlier. What creates, what transformation creates a parallel line? A translation. Can, but a translation every time. A translation will always create a parallel line. So, I know that the only way to get a parallel line to this is to translate it up. You good over there, Jaden? I'll fix it. So, negative 4, 8. And then what do I now need to do through that point? Draw a vertical Draw a vertical line? Yeah. All right. Anybody want to push back or ask me a question about? No. Horizontal. horizontal line? Yeah. Why is it horizontal? Because it's parallel. And that's on perpendicular. You have to wait. It's got to be parallel, right? This is what I did. This is how I approach this problem. Notice all I did was I graphed my points. See how I justified my details? Graph the line perpendicular to y equals negative 1. That told me immediately that it's vertical because y equals negative 1 is horizontal. I wrote the equation x equals 6 because every point has an x value of what? 6. Part B, graph the line parallel to y equals negative 1 that passes through negative 4, 8, and then write the equation for that line. So that's horizontal and y equals 8 because every y value is 8. Notice I, I drew those lines in there, and then I identified, if I, even if I didn't write it out, pick any point, right, Maddie? Is what you were asking about earlier? Mm -hmm. 
I'm just identifying any points, but what I should notice about every point is that every point has what truth? The y is 8. If the y is always 8, the equation is y equals 8. If the x was always negative 3, the equation would be? 3. x equals 3. I said negative 3. Negative 3, there we go. Right? So those are things you want to keep in mind. Can you let Joey in, please? And then Caitlin, you can go. Hello? Sorry, I forgot to post. No, I do not. Yep. Yep. Bye. Okay. Now, this is the more important detail. Horizontal, vertical lines, honestly. Very straightforward. If you graph those lines, you can quickly identify um, if all the point, which points are the same, right? Horizontal and vertical lines will always be x equals, will always be y equals, one of the two. Just look at the points to figure it out. What's a little bit harder, though, is number eight. Okay? Number eight is where I need you to pay attention. Because this is what's really going to be really important for lesson four that we cover hopefully a little bit today and more heavily tomorrow. Number eight says write the equation of the line that is perpendicular to y equals three halves x plus two. So first off, if I'm looking at parallel lines, I, I know it's asking perpendicular here, but I, I want to clarify. If we're looking at parallel lines, what do we know about those lines? Only if we already have a horizontal line, but what do we know about all pairs of parallel lines ever? They have the same slope because they are translations. One thing to clarify, I need y'all to pay attention to this. Line segments can be congruent. <clears throat> lines cannot because lines continue forever. Ever, right? So a line can never be congruent. It can be parallel. Line segments can be congruent. Okay. Okay. Um, so, but yeah, if we're talking about parallel lines, they're translations of each other, so the slopes are the same. same. If they're perpendicular, though, the slopes are opposites and reciprocal. Well, negative is the opposite. Okay, so when we say opposite, that's the more mathematical or accurate way to say negative. Um, and here's why. I need y'all to pay attention, so Kyla, please look at this. Um, if I have, I'm going to make one up here, two-fifths, right? The negative would be what? Negative two-fifths? And then reciprocal would be five-halves, right? But let's say that I have negative five-halves. The negative is still negative 5 halves. Like, I wouldn't change the negative because it's already negative. But if I want the opposite, it's going to go from a negative to a positive. That's the difference, right? If you say negative, it's always going to be negative. If it's opposite, it's going to go from a negative to a positive or a positive to a negative. Does that difference make sense? That's an important that, uh, language difference there. Okay. So it's perpendicular. I need the opposite and reciprocal, right? Opposite and reciprocal slope. So what is the current slope? Uh, three, three, <laughs> three halves or three oh, divided by two. Divided by two. Remember, not over. That's the only one we can't say. Three halves or three divided by two. I would imagine, though, there's at least a handful of us that are not sure how we got that three halves. Can someone clarify how we're getting, recognizing three halves as the slope? Because um, three halves is a part of the three halves. Three halves. But how do you know that two is not the rise divided by the rise? Because the rise, they're looking at the slope of the two is the rise. Hey, remember, what's the name of this equation right here? Slope, intercept point. 
And what symbol do we use for slope? Yeah. No, what symbol do we use for slope? Oh, right. Right. Remember, y'all. Okay, right, but slow down. I'm just asking what symbol do we use for slope? This symbol is M, right? And notice how the three halves is in the same spot as that M. That's how I know my slope is three halves. Maddie, did you have a question? Well, so remember, we're trying to find the perpendicular slope, right? So I need to be able to identify slope off of this equation. So I'm making sure we understand why the slope is three halves, right? So we need to be able to recognize slope from the equation. There it is, three halves. So what would the perpendicular slope be? Negative two divided by three. The opposite, it was positive, now it is negative. It was three halves, the reciprocal means that the fraction flips, right? Okay. Um, so the perpendicular slope is negative two thirds. Am I done? No. What do I still need? So I need to write. Well, I need to write the equation. So, well, here's something I will point out. Some of y'all are using this point slope equation, and that's fine. But here's the thing: it once you write that equation, would you know how to graph from that equation? No. No. Do you know how to graph at least okay from the slope intercept though? Yeah. Well, can I just take this point and graph it? So I'm going to go to 3, 4. And then could I use this slope right here to find the y-intercept? That's what I would do to write my equation. I would just graph it and use my slope to find the y-intercept. So what is my slope? Okay, so where am I going to go from this point? Down. Down, how far? Two. two. And then to the right. Right. One, two, three. Why was it down two but right three? Because it's negative. Negative two, so that rise is down. Ethan, you with us? The rise is down two. But why is it to the right three? Because three is positive. You with that, Ethan? Rise and run. It helps when you label those things. So remember how a lot of y'all keep asking or struggling with justifying. Tell me why. Put the evidence there. Why is it down two? Why is it to the right three? Rise and run. It helps. Um, the other thing... Excuse me, I'm still teaching. Please focus. Could I continue going down two into the right three? Yes. yes. Has that gotten me to the y-intercept, though? No. Um, not, yet. not yet, right? So what do I need to do to get to the y-intercept? Huh? Oh, yeah, I need to go the other way, right? So what do I need to do to get over to here? I need to go up to, to the left. So yeah, that creates a nice straight line. Okay. Now I can write the equation of that line. If I were you, I would always just go ahead and graph it. I'll have graph paper up here for you during assessments. I would graph the point that I have and use my slope to find the y-intercept. And then y equals mx plus b. So what is my slope? Y equals negative 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 two thirds x plus six. And then the y intercept? Plus six. Plus six. Okay. That's what I would do. Hold on one second. Yes, sir. You, oh my gosh, you only got 10 minutes left, right? You can't hold 10 minutes. 
Y'all are making this at idea as as you not look at that. of the perpendicular bisector entirely too hard. I need y'all to pay attention to this. Look, I know it's not the easiest to see, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little thing and put it at the end point, right? And then I take, now I want, I'm going to do one that does it incorrectly, and I need you to pay attention to how to do it correctly. All I'm going to do is create an arc. That's it. Nice, smooth arc. Okay? This, I'm not quite done yet. Now, notice how I've only done it from one endpoint, right? Now, if I do it from the other endpoint, I'm going to draw this arc over here. There's a second arc. Can anyone tell me what the problem is right now? You didn't one bigger than the other. Hold on, sorry. Lillian, we're volunteered first. Stop. What was the issue? Right, but how can you look there and tell immediately that I made a mistake? Right, those arcs have to intersect. Guys, if you don't open this up wide enough, that's the only time you're going to have an issue. But I can tell when you don't have a nice arc like that that you did not use your protractor. Now, if you notice on question one on the very front, what does it say is the very first step? C. C. You have to open this nice and wide, right? Now watch what happens when I open this nice. Stop and pay attention. I'm trying to actually show you how to do this. If it's nice and wide, there's an arc. I come back over to A and I draw this arc. And what do those two arcs do? Intersect. They intersect. And then what am I going to do to get the perpendicular bisector? Draw what? A line. A line through those intersection points. That is it. That is the perpendicular bisector, meaning it's creating what kind of angle? Right angle. A right angle. And this point is the what? Ah, uh, stop. Midpoint. That's the midpoint. Figure you have. Parallel. So, but shh, listen. 
What determines if they're parallel or perpendicular or neither? The slope. slope. So you have to know how to calculate slope. What determines if side lengths are congruent? Their distance. Their length. So we're going to practice. Stop talking and listen. We are going to practice using the distance formula tomorrow in class. But you need to come ready to, and know how to use the slope. You need to come ready to know what the different features of each figure are so that when we use distance formula, we're good to go. Have a good rest of your day. I'll make it up.